Morning. Welcome to a take. Farming in the Philippines. Saturday morning and a change of plan. So don't forget to like, share, subscribe, ding a ling, ding dong, the bell. We've got four men on site and we fit in the sheets today. The reason we changed it is because tomorrow from six o'clock in the morning till six o'clock in the evening there's a brownout. So no power on site all day tomorrow. So we've had a scramble this morning to reorganise. Um, and they started to put the tin sheets on now on this side of the piggery which has got the flashings and, and guttering installed. Now, the other side of the piggery, there's still work to be done on the purlins and the flashings and um, guttering has, haven't been installed. Now, they can do it after the sheet's on, but it's harder. So that's the way they're going to do it, as far as I'm aware. But I'll just let them work away. And uh, it'll all turn out all right, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, changing plans at short notice. We <coughs> we found out last night at 10 o'clock of the night time that um, there's going to be no electricity on Sunday. But 10 o'clock at night time, for these fellas, they're all asleep. So we couldn't arrange anything last night, so we did all the arranging this morning. But anyway, we'll see how we go. I'll make a couple of videos throughout the day, and you can see what progress we make. We've got five men on site now, and uh, the centre way from centre way for an extra drill from Rich's house and an adapter to, for the tech screws to screw them in. So, with three men on the roof, all three have a drill, all three are putting screws in. And with two men on the ground, just waiting to pass some sheets up. So I don't know how they're going to work today. Maybe Richie, when he gets them organised, he'll go back onto the other side of the roof and continue welding. Or oh, if there's somewhat one, another one in the crew can weld, you maybe put them on welding, I don't know. But they can put the flashings and guttering on after the tin sheet, it's just harder to do it that way. So the brown out is certainly disrupting what we're doing, but like any problem, you have to work around it. It's 10.30. <coughs> Sorry, it's 10.30, so we're about two hours into it now, and they pass the halfway mark on this side. It goes very quickly, the sheeting.
nice bit of shade under here. I think I'll move my chair down here. <laughs> Now where they're working on top of that tin sheet, it must be stinking hot. They've all got covered, the red's covered. Because um, it's reflecting the heat. Because it's white, which is why I've put white sheeting on, of course. But under here, it's distinctly, it's quite pleasant. It's uh, an awful lot cooler. I thought, well, it, a white sheeting would make two or three degrees difference in the temperature in the piggery. No, but it's more than that. It's going to make, I don't know, six or eight degrees difference. It's really cool under here now. Yeah. It's uh, just after lunch now. We've had a shower of rain during lunchtime and we lost maybe three quarters of an hour. Maybe an hour. Uh, after they had to wipe the sheets down to get the wet off them. Um, so we're going to be finished this side. The far side they're doing next Sunday. And there's been three men digging down the bottom. And that's how they're going to fill the day in, is to dig a bit more. There's one sheet left there. Just a 18 inch short, so that'll just overlap onto the other sheets. 
that this side is nearly finished. To make a concluding video, the fellows have just left site, they finished this half of the roof, we'll go and have a look. The sun's in my eyes, so. Looking quite tidy. Down the edges. Yeah. Now the difference in temperature underneath here to outside, even though the sun's going low in the sky now, it's quite, uh, quite a big difference. I haven't got a thermometer so I can't measure it. But the sun is just behind that palm tree and then it'll set behind the mountain. So I was thinking earlier on, roughly speaking we're running east to west with this piggery which is the way you should be running um, and then you haven't got the sun on on the full length of the piggery all day is that right east to west no the sun rises in the east to west so we're north to south whichever anyway um, the sun crosses the roof um, in that direction Where's my finger? It doesn't go in that, that, that direction where the sun's on the roof all the day. But it's quite normal to put pig curtains up to keep the sun out. So you'd have a pig curtain on this side which would close in the morning and then open up at lunchtime when the sun's off it. And then a pig curtain that side which would close in the afternoon to keep the sun out. But the way we're situated here, because we've got that bank and we've got an overhang of a meter or whatever it is, the sun is not getting in this side of the piggery at all. And then in the afternoon, When this roof is on, the sun isn't going to get inside this side of the, this half of the building. And when it gets low enough in the sky, it's going to be behind that mountain. So we're not going to need pig curtains, which saves a little bit of money, and you don't have to be raising them and lowering them all bloody day long. So that's a good thing. Now, we'd maybe want too many men on site today to be employed the way I like to employ them. But we've got a bit of digging done, not a tremendous amount, 
But it, I'm not being too critical because it's been a hot sunny day apart from lunchtime when we had an hour of rain, rain and showers and spits and spots. But them blokes working on top of that roof with the white roof reflecting all the heat back on them they're, they're knackered. Uh, you can well imagine. Uh, they're all wrapped up in long sleeves, heads covered, and they were working bare feet, especially this, after the lunch break showers, because that's the only way they could grip on, on the tin sheeting. So they've gone home early, um, and I'm quite happy. We've got this half the roof done. They've worked well, it's been hard work in the temperatures we've had. So I'm not going to quibble about an early finish. I think they've earned it. But we have got a little bit more digging done. That's back now to a bay and a half. There's quite a few rocks being dug out. And the wall extended. Temporary returning wall. Yeah. So a good day's work and we've took a big leap forward. Doesn't take long with sheet, uh, tin sheeting. Once they get going. A day makes a big difference. And from this end of the site now, this big of it is quite imposing. <laughs> it's looking good. Now the big of it I had in Kerrang, that was half as long again, or maybe, well it was 100 foot anyway, maybe 120 foot long, I never measured it. Um, so it's a fair size piggery to me, but the piggery I had in Kerrang was considered small. I only had 600 pigs in it. But here, of course, 600 pigs is very big. Now, that piggery, at a push, you could get 100 in. It would probably run them maybe at 80 pigs. If it's profitable, and you don't know that for certain until you start. Um, if it's not profitable, then obviously you uh, adjust things or turn it into something else or whatever. But I think I know enough about pigs to uh, minimise the costs and maximise the feed which is a major cost, of course. The only thing I'm lacking with at the moment, well, the rest of my life it'll be the same, is because of age, I can't do the work I used to do. But fortunately here, I can employ somebody on a relatively small amount of money. That's why it's got to be profitable. It can't be just a hobby for me. If I was just making a hobby for me, I'd have two pigs. Because you can only eat so much pork.